good day everyone welcome to lecture number 15 of this lecture series on microprocessor 8085 so in lecture number 14 we started the discussion about the interrupts in 8085 okay so we said what are interrupts what are the different types of inter interrupts and we also discussed one of the interrupt that is intr so this particular interrupt we said that this is a non vector interrupt so that means is when this interrupt is there when this interrupt signal is there our processor sends an interrupt acknowledgement signal to the interrupting device and after that after receiving this inter, uh, interrupt acknowledgement our interrupting device will send the starting address of interrupt service routine okay so either it will send the starting address of interrupt service routine or it will result in a call instruction or it will raise one of the rst instruction okay so it will raise rst 0 or any rst signal up to rst 7 and we said that for this particular interrupt to enable this interrupt we should have enable interrupts instruction so this particular instruction is used to enable this particular interrupt so what this instruction is doing it is setting the interrupt flag interrupt enable flag so we have discussed this in great detail so i discuss it again here only to recap the concepts now the today's lecture is about the vector interrupts so we know what is a non vector interrupt we said a non vector interrupt is an interrupt where the processor does not know the starting address of interrupt service routine so in this particular interrupt non vector interrupt the interrupting device has to send the starting address however in vector interrupts if we take the vector interrupts so these are the interrupts where processor or we can say the microprocessor knows the starting address of interrupt service routine okay so that means interrupting device does not have to send the starting address okay so you can also see there is no need of having this particular acknowledgement okay so these kind of interrupts when our microprocessor 8085 receives a vector interrupt it receives that particular interrupt and it automatically jumps to one particular location jumps to starting address of interrupt service routine so for every vector interrupt there is one specific starting address okay so in our microprocessor 8085 we have total five uh, sorry four vector interrupts so these are total four vector interrupts and what are those four vector interrupts one is trap the second is rst 7.5 then third is rst 6.5 and the fourth one is rst 5.5 
So these are the four interrupts, or we can say four vector interrupts. But you have to remember that this interrupt, INTR, and these four interrupts, they all, so it is total five. These five are hardware, hardware interrupts. What is a hardware interrupt? Hardware interrupt means that there is a specific pin for these interrupts. Okay. However, there are some software interrupts. For example, these instructions, RST 0 to 7, these are software interrupts. So that means we don't have any dedicated pin for these particular interrupts. And the, these interrupts are raised inside the program. So when a programmer writes a program, he can write any instruction from these five, seven, eight instructions and the interrupt is raised. However, these five, INTR, TRAP, RST 7.5, RST 6.5 and RST 5.5, these five are hard where interrupts. Hardware interrupts means that in the pin diagram, there are dedicated pins for these interrupts. And among these five, this INTR is a non-vector interrupt and these four are vector interrupts. And you have to also remember that INTA is not an interrupt, but it is an interrupt acknowledge. Okay. So now let's come back to the vector interrupts. So as I said, these are the four uh, yes, four uh, vector interrupts. So among these four vector interrupts, this one is non-maskable. Okay. And these three are maskable interrupts. What is the meaning of maskable and non-maskable? We have already discussed in this in our last lecture. So mass non-maskable means that we cannot make our processor to ignore this interrupt. Okay. And these three are maskable. Maskable means we can make our processor to ignore these interrupts. Okay. And you have to remember that these interrupts can also be, uh, we can say these interrupts can be, uh, what I mean to say, these interrupts can be disabled by DI signal, DI instruction, like we can do the same for INTR. So let's suppose I have used DI instruction in my program. So this is disable interrupt. Disable interrupt means interrupt flag should be reset. So if this instruction is there, then if this particular interrupt comes or any of these three interrupts comes, my processor will ignore those interrupts. However, even if I have DI instruction, disable interrupt instruction in my program, still my processor won't ignore this particular interrupt. So it is a critical interrupt. This particular interrupt is used for critical situations. However, apart from DI instruction, disabling the interrupts, there are other methods of masking these interrupts. Masking means, let's say I want that this 6.5 and 5.5 should be ignored. So can I do using the DI instruction? No. Because DI instruction will disable all the interrupts, RST 7.5, 6.5, 5.5 and INTR. But if I want that, no, INTR and RST 7.5 should not be ignored. Only these two interrupts should be ignored, this and this. Likewise, for example, if I want that 7.5 should be ignored and these two should not be ignored, then how can I do that? 
there is a possibility to do that in 8085. That is why these are called maskable interrupts. We can use a kind of mask. Mask means we can use some encoding. I will discuss that. And using that particular code, I can make my processor to understand that you don't have to, you have to only care about some of the interrupts and you can ignore other interrupts. Okay. So let's first see how we can mask the interrupts. Then we will discuss each interrupt separately. Okay, so let's first see how we can mask these interrupts. So let's see the masking of interrupts. Then we will discuss each interrupt in detail. Masking of interrupts. So what are the interrupts that we can mask? So we are discussing about RST. 7.5, 6.5, and 5.5. Okay, so these are the interrupts about which we are discussing. So for setting the mask, mask means for making our processor to ignore some of the interrupts, okay, and only take care of some interrupts. We have one instruction in microprocessor 8085 that is SIM. SIM in a structure. So it has some of the, it has many advent, uh, not, it has many functionalities. So let me list every functionality here. So what it does, the first functionality of SIM in a structure, the first function of SIM in a structure is, and you have to remember that it is a one byte in a structure. And what are its functionality? Let's take the first one. So the first functionality is that it is used to set mask for RST 7.5, 6.5, and 5.5 interrupts. Okay, so it is used to set mask for these interrupts. So what does that mean? Setting a mask. So what it does this instruction, SIM instruction. So when we have SIM instruction in our program, it checks the accumulator. And we know that accumulator is a register. And this register is of how many bits? Eight bits. So this is zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Okay. So what it does, this instruction, SIM instruction checks the accumulator. And by checking the contents of the accumulator, it decides which interrupts I have to ignore and which interrupt should be active. Or we can say it checks the inter it checks the accumulator and then enables or disables the interrupts according to the contents of the accumulator. So what it does this bit D3, this particular bit D3 bit, it is also called a mask set enable bit. Okay. So what is mask set enable bit doing? So if this bit, so there are two possible values for this one is zero and another is one. So if the value is zero, we have to ignore bits zero, one, and two. So that means if this particular bit is zero, zero means that when it is, this is zero, we don't care about the bits zero, one, and two. So our 
uh, this uh, what i mean to say our processor will only enable these interrupts if there was enable interrupts instruction so if there was enable instruction then there was this instruction sim and in the sim in accumulator there was at the third bit it was zero zero means that i don't care about the mask so that means mask is not set so if the mask is not set that means my processor won't ignore these three interrupts okay however if this is set then that means mask is set so if the mask is set what my processor has to do it has to check bits 0 1 and 2 so these three bits 0 1 and 2 okay and this bit is for rst 5.5 mask for rst 5.5 this is mask for rst 6.5 and this is mask for rst 7.5 if this particular bit zeroth bit if this is zero then that means this particular interrupt is active however if this bit is one then that means my processor should ignore rst 5.5 likewise if this bit is this first bit is 1 0 that means my rst 6.5 is active however if this bit is 0 1 that means rst 6.5 is masked masked means my processor will ignore the this particular interrupt so that means for these three bits so if the value is 0 0 means interrupt is active and 1 means interrupt is inactive inactive or we can say or interrupt has been masked or we can say it is to be ignored okay fine so this is the functionality of our sim instruction one first functionality second functionality of sim instruction is that it resets 7.5 rst 7.5 flip flop so what does that mean in our microprocessor 8085 there is one specific flip flop for this particular interrupt rst 7.5 if this bit this uh, what i mean to say yes if this particular uh, flip flop is zero that means this interrupt has been reset and if this is one no sorry if this is one then that means interrupt has been reset okay and if it is zero then it means do nothing so this particular thing why we require this bit this particular bit uh, this fourth bit so this is for this resetting this fourth bit so if this bit is one so if this d4 bit is 1 then this flip flop is resetted so that means this flip flop will get value 0 however if this is 0 then do nothing so what is the use of this particular uh, bit or we can say what is the meaning of resetted resetted here means this resetted so it is used to override or ignore rst 7.5 without servicing it what 
what does that mean let's say in my uh, this particular in my uh, program i have written ei instruction okay ei by default means that intr rst 7.5 rst 6.5 and rst 5.5 they are enabled okay now if i i am using sim instruction and in the sim instruction since it is checking the accumulator if in the accumulator d4 bit is 1 so what it will do it will ignore rst 7.5 it can also ignore it using these particular bits but this is another method of ignoring or overriding the rst 7.5 indirect this is the second functionality of sim instruction the third functionality of sim instruction is that so now how many uh, which bit is require, uh, remaining these three 5 6 and 7 so 5 and 5 is don't care it won't check the bit 5 and these two bits 6 and 7 these are used for serial input output okay so these are the three functionalities of sim instruction so we won't discuss this the third functionality because we have to discuss it when we discuss the communication from microprocessor to external devices okay so in that we will discuss about the serial communication and parallel communication so here these are the only two functionalities that we have to take care of functionality 1 and functionality 2 okay so now let's see how let's write an example here so that will help us to understand the things so let me write an example so let's say i have to enable all interrupts in 8085 so how i can enable all interrupts so the first first thing is i should have this instruction ei instruction enable interrupts then i should set mask for interrupts rst 7.5 5 6.5 and 5.5 so that means if this is my accumulator okay this is bit 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 so this particular bit should be 1 1 means mask has been set and these should be 0 this zero this zero and this zero because zero means interrupts are enabled okay so that means my this particular uh, what i mean to say this particular uh, accumulator should contain the following data and if you can uh, convert it in uh, in hexadecimal it is 08 h so the accumulator should contain 08h so the second instruction is i will move this data in accumulator so now my accumulator has this data then i will use sim instruction so sim instruction will check this accumulator and it will enable rst 7.5 6.5 and 5.5 and intr is enabled by ei and this will enable all the interrupts so this particular program will enable all interrupts in my microprocessor 8085 okay now your uh, i can say the homework or your uh, job here is to write a program to reset interrupt 7.5 so this is the first program the second program is write a program to ignore rst 6.5 and 5.5 so these two it should ignore okay so you have to write the programs
fine so this was all about how we can set the mask for interrupts fine now here if we come back to this particular slide as i said that these four interrupts are vector interrupts so let me write it here again so trap rst 7.5 rst 6.5 and rst 5.5 so as i said that these four are vector interrupts what is the meaning of vector interrupts vector interrupts means that our processor by default has the starting address of these interrupts or interrupt service routines for these okay so let me write those addresses here so for trap the address is for this particular the address is 0024h so this is the starting address for rst 7.5 the starting address is 003ch for rst 6.5 the starting address is 0034h and for rst 5.5 the starting address is 002ch and also in terms of priority so if we discuss about the priority so in terms of priority is this interrupt trap has the highest priority then rst 7.5 then rst 6.5 then rst 5.5 okay and then intr and after intr we have software interrupts so what are software interrupts we already know we have eight such instructions for software interrupts so on the top we have rst 7 then we have rst 6 and at the last we have rst 0 so this is the priority of interrupts and among these trap has the highest priority Okay. so what is the meaning of priority priority means that if this interrupt is there and this interrupt is also there so priority will get to this particular interrupt so this interrupt will be first handled then we can handle this particular interrupt so let's now discuss each of these vectored interrupts one by one so the first one is the trap this particular vector interrupt so as i said some of the points that you have to remember regarding the trap is that it is non maskable interrupt that means we cannot mask this particular interrupt the second point is it is hard wear interrupt so we have a dedicated pin in the pin diagram okay and it is a vectored interrupt vectored interrupt means that the interrupting device does not have to send the starting address of the interrupt service routine in a steed our microprocessor itself by default knows it's the its starting address and the starting address of this particular subroutine is 0024h okay and this particular interrupt has the highest priority among all the interrupts okay and the other point about this particular interrupt is that it is level and edge sensitive what does that mean let me elaborate that means when some uh, this uh, when some device is trying to send the trap interrupt that particular device has to send a signal that should first 
rise up okay so positive edge triggered and then it should remain one so this particular signal, the signal on the trap pin, it should go from low to high and then remain high. Okay. So I can show it like this. One is arrow and another arrow is this like this. So it means that this particular interrupt is sensitive to the rising edge. So rising edge is shown by this arrow and to the level. Okay. Level means it should remain one. Okay, that is denoted by this particular arrow here. So it is level and edge sensitive. So that means if my device is sending a trap interrupt, then it should send a signal that should go up, remain one, and it should remain one till this interrupt is serviced. Till this interrupt is serviced means that it is ISR interrupt service routine is completed. The job is completed. Then after completing the job, this signal will go low. Okay. So our trap signal is level and edge sensitive. Okay. So this is one, uh, these are some of the points relate to the, uh, this particular interrupt, trap interrupt. Okay. And as I said that it is a vectored interrupt. So the Program control is automatically transferred to location 0024H without any external device or the interrupt enable instruction. So this particular interrupt does not require EI instruction. Okay. So if I can make it like this, for example, this is a trap. This is a trap interrupt. So I can write it like this. So this means that it is edge sensitive and level sensitive. So that means this signal should go from low to high and then remain high. Okay. And when my processor receives this signal, this particular signal, it automatically jumps to location 0024H. Okay. So this is all about trap. Now let's come to the other uh, interrupt that is RST 7.5, 6.5 and 5.5. Let's discuss these three together. Okay. These three are maskable interrupts. And these are also hardware, hardware interrupts. So that means there are dedicated pins for these interrupts. And these are vector interrupts. Vector means here also the program control is automatically transferred to fixed memory locations. Okay. And these interrupts are, as I said, these are maskable interrupts. They are enabled by two instructions. One is enable interrupt and another is SIM. So we have already discussed about the SIM instruction. Okay. So these are enabled by these two. Fine. Now among these interrupts, among these three interrupts, RST 7.5, uh, 6.5 and 5.5, if we take RST 7.5, this particular, this particular interrupt is positive edge trigger. Okay. And the other interrupts that is RST 6.5. And RST 5.5. These two interrupts are level trigger. So that means if my interrupting device has to send RST 7.5, what it should do, it should only make a transition from 0 to 1. 
it doesn't uh, the, after that it doesn't care what is this signal so if there is a transition from 0 to 1 on this rst 7.5 uh, interrupt pin then this interrupt is raised okay however for rst 6.5 and rst 7.5 if interrupting device has to send these interrupts then it can send by raising these signals to 1 and then keep these signals at 1 only Okay, so we have to keep these signals 6.5 or 5.1 at one only till they are serviced. Okay, so these both are, uh, as I said, these are level triggered, and this one is positive edge triggered. And also, I said that these particular interrupts, these are maskable interrupts, so that means they depend upon the EI enable. Uh, instruction and sim instruction and also you have to remember since this is a positive edge triggered when this interrupt is raised this particular interrupt this particular interrupt is internally stored as one bit in a d flip flop so there is one specific flip flop for rst 7.5 so when this signal goes from low to high, this bit is set to one. Set to one means that this interrupt should be handled. Okay. However, there is no such case for RST 6.5 and RST 5.5. Also, you have to remember, let's suppose my processor, my microprocessor is handling some interrupt. Okay, and in the meantime, some more interrupts come. What it will do? It won't accept those interrupts, or we can say it will store those interrupts internally. So these are also called pending interrupts. pending interrupts so for example if my microprocessor is re receiving trap rst 7.5 and rst 6.5 it should first do with the trap complete the trap and store rst 7.5 and rst 6.5 so after completing the trap what my microprocessor does after completing the trap or after completing one interrupt it checks whether there are pending interrupts. If there are pending interrupts, it will then take care of those interrupts. Now it checks whether there are pending interrupts. How does it check the, the pending interrupts? It checks it with the help of one specific instruction that is called a rim instruction. So RIM instruction, this is also called a read interrupt mask. This is a one byte instruction and it has its functionalities. So we will discuss this RIM instruction in detail. Let's wait how we can use this RIM instruction. Okay. Now first let's make a complete diagram where we will handle all these interrupts. Okay, so let me go to a new page. So let's start from this point. So let's first take this pin. Let's say it is for trap. Okay. And as we know that this trap is edge and level sense to. Okay. So this is edge and level sense to. So when this trap signal is there, it directly goes to address. 0024H. 0024H. Okay. Then there is another one that is INTR. So if this signal is there, INTR, it is level sense to. Okay. When this signal is there, the signal is one. 
So this interrupt, for this interrupt, we have to check also that EI instruction should have been there, enable interrupts. Then only this interrupt is handled. Okay, so let me rub this. So let's make the circuit complete. So this is a D flip-flop. So this is S input and this is R. And this is the output. Q is the output. Okay. So it is getting EI here. And here it is getting one of these R of DI, DI minus disable interrupt. Second is reset. And the third input is any interrupt, any interrupt recognized. So that means some interrupt is all already there. Now let's say EI enable interrupting instruction is there. So if enable instruction is there, so that means this is one. So output will be one. Okay. So if this output is one and this is also one, so both are one. So we will use the AND gate. Okay. Then this interrupt is handled. However, if EI is zero and one of these is one, so that means DI is one or reset is one or any other interrupt is there. So that means this is one. So that means this input is one and this input is zero. So output will be zero because Q output will be S output. So if R is one, S will be zero. So output will be zero, zero will, will come here. So that means we don't have to handle this particular interrupt. Okay. So this is the circuit for handling this particular interrupt. Then after this, what we have to see if this interrupt is there. So this is one. So that means this interrupt is to be handled. Then we have to get the code, get the code from interrupting device or get address. So the address can be anything. Okay. So it can be any memory location, but let's take only those addresses that we already know. So that means the addresses, which addresses RST, RST zero, RST one, RST two, RST three. How many addresses? How many eight? Okay, so RST zero will be zero 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 H. So RST one will be zero 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 eight H. Then we have RST two will be zero zero one zero H. Okay, and RST three will be zero zero one eight H. And RST three, RST four will be zero zero two zero H. Then RST four, RST five is zero zero two eight H. RST five, RST six is zero zero three zero H. RST one zero one two three four five six. Then the last one is RST RST seven. RST seven is zero zero three eight. So this is about the INTI. Okay. Now let's see the other three interrupts now. Now let's take the RST five point five. Okay. So let's go for RST 5.5. So we know that RST 5.5 is again level sensitive. Okay. So for this particular thing, what we have to do, we have to see this particular interrupt. And what are the other things? We have to also see this particular thing. This should be one. One means that it is enabled. Okay. And apart from that, not only these two, we have to only also see the mask. So let's say this is the mask. So that means same instruction. So these three we have to take. And when all these three are one, okay. So all these three are one. So this is one, 
this should also be one and this mask should be zero why zero zero means that it is enabled because we know zero mask means it is enabled so we will give these three as input to and gate so why i am putting not here not means it will take its complement so this should be zero this should be one this should be one then only output will be one output will be one means that we have to go to address so which address is this 002ch so it will lie here 002ch similarly we have for rst 6.5 so the same thing these three inputs one is mask this so mask should be zero and this particular thing and it will go to address 0034h 0034h and then remain is the so this is also level sensitive then comes the 7.5 rst 7.5 and we know that it is only positive edge trigger so this is both positive edge trigger and level trigger this is positive edge trigger okay so for this also we have three one is the mask another is this particular input and another one is this not this but there are some other things what are the other things so the other things is this will go output to d flip flop so this is d okay and output from this is connected to this so that means q q bar and this has a clear input clear means make the output zero and this clear will come from these two so one is reset reset means reset 7.5 and another is rst 7.5 rst 7.5 recognizer so that means if there is already some interrupt that is rst 7.5 or this is uh, resetted so we have to ignore this so we will take zero here zero will come here it will make one so output so clear this clear output is one so one that means clear this clear means make it zero zero means ignore it however if clear is not there so directly it this will go to q q will become one this will be one and it will go to address 003c okay. so please understand this so this particular portion is required so if this portion if any one among these is true output will be zero output will be zero means that i have to ignore this interrupt so if any one among these two is true for example reset is true that means rst 7.5 has been resetted so we have to ignore it or if there is already rst 7.5 in the system then we have to ignore the new rst 7.5 so this is the complete scenario or we can say complete 8085 interrupts and their vector locations okay i hope you understood this particular diagram and all the concepts that are there in this particular diagram now let's discuss about the rim instruction and what are its uses then with that instruction we will wrap up this particular lecture so let's go to a new page and let's discuss what is a rim instruction and how it is used so let's go for the rim instruction or we can say let's discuss about the pending interrupts so as i said when my uh, this uh, system or microprocessor is handling some interrupts and in the meantime some more interrupts will come so what it does it internally stores those interrupts and after completing the current interrupt it 
takes these interrupts and then tries to sort out these interrupts okay and for to sense these or we can say to handle these pending interrupts or to sense these pending interrupts we have one specific instruction rem instruction okay and this particular instruction which is also called read interrupt mask so it is a one byte instruction like the sim instruction so since sim instruction has many functionalities in the similar manner rem has many functionalities the first functionality is that this instruction loads accumulator with 8 bits indicating the current status of the interrupt masks so it loads accumulator with 8 bits indicating the current status of the interrupt mask okay so it loads the accumulator but it loads the accumulator with the information about the pending interrupts so the information about the pending interrupts is internally stored in the microprocessor but rem instruction loads that particular information into the accumulator then after doing this this particular thing what it does it identify pending interrupts so how will it identify pending interrupts by reading the information in the accumulator so in the accumulator these bits d4 d5 and d6 these are used to identify pending interrupts so we already know that a trap interrupt cannot be a pending interrupt why because trap has the highest priority and highest priority interrupt cannot be a pending interrupt okay we already know that highest priority interrupt will not be a pending interrupt okay and now these three bits so we know that d3 d2 d1 and d0 what is there in these in these bits so in these bits we have the mask and d4 d5 and d6 we have the information about the pending interrupts so the pending interrupt can be rst 7.5 rst 5.5 and rst uh, 6.5 so if the value of these bits is 1 so that means that particular interrupt is pending so if d4 is 1 so then interrupt 5.5 rst 5.5 is pending if interrupt if d5 is 1 that means rst 6.5 is pending and if d6 is 1 that means interrupt 7.5 is pending okay and if all these three are 1 then it will first handle this because it has the higher priority then it will handle this then it will handle this so as i said the first functionality is that it will see the interrupt mask so that means it will also see these these bits because from these bits it will see whether i have to carry out these pending interrupts or not and the information about the pending interrupts is stored in these four bits then the last functionality is that it is used to this particular instruction is used to receive serial data we won't discuss that here because it is the discussion of serial input output communication okay that will be discussed in our subsequent lectures so that is the functionality of rem instruction okay so the rem instruction the difference between the sim and rem instruction is that sim instruction is used to set up the mask and rem instruction is used to see the pen, pending interrupts and then handle those interrupts okay so with this i will stop this particular lecture and in our next lecture we will see the discussion about the direct memory access
because direct memory access is also somewhat somewhat related to the interrupts but before uh, wrapping up this particular lecture you have to understand what we discussed in this lecture so mainly we discussed about the vector interrupts okay we completed the vector interrupts we also discussed about the masking of these interrupts and that is done with the help of sim instruction then we uh, discuss the 8085 interrupt hardware after this we discussed about the pending interrupts and that is with the help of rem instruction okay so this was all about this particular lecture in our next lecture we will start about the software interrupts we will discuss about the software interrupts we have already discussed these software interrupts these are rst0 to rst7 so there is not much to discuss about these particular interrupts and then we will also discuss about the direct memory access so these will be discussed in the next lecture so let's meet in the next lecture till then goodbye